destroyed even the President of the United States often gives a State of the Union address. In a like manner, governors give State of the State addresses. I have even seen university presidents and chancellors give State of the University address. The purpose of these addresses is to reflect and assess the current state of the organization or territory. Naturally, these are given from the perspective of a member, usually the leader, of the given territory or I find it proper to give a State of the Church address, not from the perspective of a bishop or a pastor, but instead from an outsider, from himself. Tonight we will see how the Church is very today. We will see in what areas it's doing okay, in what areas it needs to improve. We will find that in some areas the church is doing good, while other areas poor. We also see some aspects of the church are okay, but other aspects are not. of organized religion often contend their faith instills a sense of courage. They often point to examples of martyrdom. They tell us religion instills nobility to the extent its followers are willing to sacrifice their life for faith. Indeed, this is noble. I may not agree with the sentiment behind it, but I do believe if you're willing to sacrifice your life, not the involuntary lives of others, for your cause, it is noble. of course matters most in the most trying circumstances. An important example to examine is Nazi Germany. Nazi Germany is generally considered one of the most evil regimes that existed. In fact, many writers, historians consider the Holocaust to be the epitome of evil. Not only was the government doing very evil acts, but it did not tolerate dissent. Dissent was also punished severely with harsh and rigid repercussions. Thus, anyone who would dissent from this evil, who would speak out, would naturally be courageous. How did the church fare? During the liberation conference that we put on in 2001, in 2000, we had Jehovah's Witnesses who talked about how courageously the witnesses acted in Nazi Germany. I've also read in other places these witnesses 
would even refuse to give up their faith when they were offered the opportunity to do so to get out of concentration camps. I've even read they were continuing to publish the Watchtower magazine while in the concentration camps. Normally, Jehovah's Witnesses are considered by society to be nuts, coops, outsiders, wrong, bad. But, apparently, they are doing something right if they are able to resist the evil of Nazi Germany. Other, less deviant Christian faith failed miserably. Some Protestants either did not act during Hitler's evil, or they outright supported it. We've all heard the famous saying by one pastor about how first they came for communists, he didn't care, he didn't speak out. Then they came for him. No one was left to speak out for him, as the saying goes. There is a photo I've seen reproduced in many places with the caption, a Protestant rector blesses a Nazi flag. Sadly, the Catholic Church was perhaps worst of all. They signed a concordat with Hitler, stipulating Hitler would allow Catholicism in Germany just as long as Catholicism did not get in the way of the regime. The two would peacefully coincide. That is not making a deal with the devil. I don't know what is. Although today we don't have Nazi Germany, we have important moral dilemmas nevertheless. Important moral dilemmas that demonstrate courage or lack thereof by religious people. The Iraq War is a moral dilemma facing our contemporary world. It is not as important as most people make it out to be, but nevertheless it involves vital moral issues. How do Christians fix? I personally cannot understand how Christians could support war. I could never understand it. The whole view of Christianity seems entirely contrary to war to me. But perhaps it's expecting too much to expect consistency or reason. Some churches are courageous. For example, I went to protest the Iraq War in St. Paul. Guess who came with me? A pastor and her husband from a Protestant group was a nun. I thought that was entirely cool. Both of them have the courage to speak out. But other Christians, sadly, they're miserable. The Catholic Church has came out and said this war is immoral. But as my friend pointed out, individual American Catholic organizations are less free. Two thousand two I debated Chris Wagner from InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. During the cross-examination portion of our discussion, I asked her the question, what would Jesus do in regards to Iraq? Her response was cowardly. She 
said, we're not supposed to say what Jesus would do. I countered, what? You wear those bracelets. Instead of answering the question, instead of reflecting upon it, she dodged it. Which tells me she's afraid of the answer. These Christians invoke what would Jesus do about these minor moral dilemmas. If I would tell them I was thinking about stealing a paper clip from some office, they would say, what would Jesus do? So when it comes to pressing social issues of the day, they avoid making a decision. That's cowardly, folks. A year later, I was sitting with her having a similar discussion, continuing some of our discussion earlier. The reason I asked her what would Jesus do in regard to the war was because a friend of mine asked his parents that thus I borrowed this idea from him. We were talking about alcohol. I was happy someone was actually agreeing with me about alcohol since few people do. Sadly, it was up only to a point. I said Jesus would probably go into liquor shops and knock the bottle off the wall. She said, no, he would react with blood. Keep this in mind what she said. When we were talking about the Iraq war, she said it was justified because our great president gave Saddam so many chances that it's right to bomb them to murder innocent people. She attributed only noble intentions to our president. That type of naivety makes me sick. Thus she was saying, Jesus would not knock beer bottles off the wall, but he would bomb Iraq. If you're going to be consistent, if you're going to be cowardly, at least be consistent on the less drastic matter. You're going to say, Jesus would knock beer bottles off the wall, but he would not bomb my breath. That's an example of being inconsistent on the less dress of men. She is not the only one. There is an annoying motor mouth named Gunnar Dieterman, who's an expert about science and religion. That's fine, he wants to reconcile science and religion. I mean, I agree with him, but I don't have a major moral problem with that. Chi Alpha brought him into our school not once but twice to give his presentation. Before one of these programs, he was advertising it, also talking to people about his discussion. Lots of people were asking him questions that didn't interest me much at all. Dry questions about his main subject, religion, science, going together. I thought I would try to ask him an important moral question. I asked him, are you familiar, do you, do you admire Martin Luther King Jr.? He gave a very small indication that he did. Then I said, in one of Martin Luther King Jr.'s speeches, he said, about a war in history. 
this time, Christians, ask yourself, what would Jesus do? He would he believed Jesus would oppose the war of his day. Thus, I ask you, then what would Jesus do about Iraq? Claiming Jesus probably would not want to bomb Iraq. which would take some courage he evaded it entirely he rambled about nuclear weapons of course as we've seen from many sources the whole nuclear weapons issue was false as the administration pulled the wool over our eyes thus his whole argument that it was just because of nuclear weapons is totally melt. So he just shut up. Answer the question. Hopefully I can pin it down on him someday. I get an urge to find his email address, email that to him. But sadly, I'm sure he could even more easily evade email questions. Guter Dieckerman has very poor conversation skills. Ask him a question, he'll try to get a word in. He will blab, 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 blab. I also tried to get him to concede a point which would have involved courage in regard to abortion. But sadly, he was too powerly to admit it. He was talking about how abortion was bad. Thus, I was trying to show him our president sucks because our president doesn't care about abortion. I tried to get him to admit our president sucks because our president doesn't care about abortion. But his stupid, cowardly response was the president really can't do anything about abortion. Is he completely stupid? Of course the president can do something about abortion. The president apparently doesn't want to because if he did, we would have no abortion. If he put half as much energy into getting rid of abortion as he did in the Iraq war, it would be gone. If the president can't do anything about abortion, no one can. Of course people can, therefore, Luther Dieterman's cowardly response is invalid. Wherever you guys keep these from apparently doesn't weed out the idiots. Because Guru Deacon is an idiot. He even assumed I have not read it. the Bible. I memorized tons of verses, Guru Deacon, so shut up, you idiot. He was too cowardly to embrace social just movements of the day that may not be witty. But he also earlier in his conversation claimed Christians led all the great social movements in history. He claimed those because they won. It's easy to be a bandwagon hopper. When someone wins, everyone wants a part of it. When someone is struggling during the day, no one wants to embrace it. Football fans see this all the time. There's some fans that are true and tried fans. 0 16, they will stay with the team. 16 0, they will stay with the team. Other people will only be there when the team is in the playoffs. Guru Dikaman is that type of person. One aspect of religion, which I find particularly repulsive, as many others do, is fundamentalism. Fundamentalists are often characterized by fire and brimstone. When I was about 14 is when I first intuitively felt there was something wrong 
with organized religion, specifically Christianity. When I became a senior in high school, I really started to reflect upon religion. I've been reflecting upon it ever since. What I found particularly egregious, what I found particularly offensive about Protestant Christianity was the issue that Protestant Christianity demanded belief in God as a necessary condition to get to heaven. If you did not believe, not only would you not go to heaven, you'd go to hell for eternity. That seemed irrational and unjust, unjust to me. In fact, I consider that the epitome of injustice. Just because even if Christianity is true, it may not be right. In fact, I may be willing to be the ultimate martyr. Atheists can be the ultimate martyr by spending eternity in hell because the major premise of Protestant Christianity is immoral. Think about it this way. Most of us find regimes that persecute people based on their beliefs to be immoral. Thus, when God persecutes people based on their beliefs, it's immoral too. God, however, is doing it for eternity, while these others are not doing it for the as long. Eternity is worse than a limited Folks consider fundamentalists to be intolerant. John McCain may have put it best when he called Jerry Powell and Pat Robertson agents of intolerance and forces of evil. Oftentimes we see lots of hate from fundamentalists about gays, about Catholics, sometimes even about Jews. when someone tells everyone they're going to hell, that turns them off. I have had my battles with stupid fundamentalists. One fundamentalist outfit that claimed I was not macho enough to admit God was right. Claim Jews who were Holocaust survivors would be spending eternity in hell because they were Jews. That seems horrible, horrible, horrible to me. That reminds me of the movie Seven. In the movie Seven, one of the men who was tortured was going to hell. Therefore, if someone commented, he already has been through more pain than anyone else, the most anyone else. Now he's going to hell. Thus, 
many times we consider fundamentalists to be seeing the world in black and white. I have had many discussions with fundamentalists, very frustrating, because as Larry Wilcox and John George say, these extremists and our big fundamentalists, instead of thinking critically, will spout the same higher goals of the state. Fundamentalist Christians are expert at it. Although, not always, but most of the time, you will get the same responses, the same questions asked by a fundamentalist. I have seen Catholics see more grace. In fact, one of my Catholic friends said, indeed, that is the case. Catholics have just more theory where we don't support every single war or hold every single war blindly. But instead, use a number of rational criteria for evaluating them. Lots of people call religion drug, call Marx, call religion the okay of the masses. Usually they say this based on certain criteria. These are the characteristics. Drug addiction inspires in people. These are the characteristics. Religion inspires in people. But I see it more on a visceral level. Look into the eyes of someone drunk or someone stoned. You will see their eyes Contrast that to someone who is say that you will see realness that you will not see in the eyes of the drunks. Look at the eyes of the fundamentalists. I get the same vibe that they are a drug just as the vibe I get from a drunk or stoker. It's not exactly, exactly the vibe, especially because different drugs give different vibes. A strong person is different from a drug, drug person just as a fundamentalist person is different from a drug person. Self-help group called fundamentalist. Not. Thus, I have asked myself the question: Is it just fundamentalism I don't like about religion, or is it religion itself? After some reflection, I have decided it's probably religion itself I don't like. Though. not so bad. Some claim religion has special principles, but we have to wonder about this. Christians often claim we have the golden rule of all these other morals. Religious scholars have contended many values are consistent across religion to religion, from Buddhism to Taoism to Hinduism to Islam. In fact, I've seen this one sheet which showed how virtually every religion had a variation of the Golden Rule. Some humanists contend, thus, there is something in humanity, not in religion, that inspires this type of algorithm. One of my Catholic 
friend that any Christian works his or her weight and salt believes social justice is important. Guter Dickerman part of his body contended
star other than you. Do not. 